Hey folks, Michael Lipton here. Uh, today we're going to be brewing the Rogue's Brew using the Box Brew Kit. So everything I have up here is what you're going to be needing, except for a couple large pots, about two gallon capacity. You're going to need two to three pots. I don't have enough pots, so I'm going to be showing some alternative methods of, uh, of brewing, but maybe it'll be your situation. Uh, what we have for ingredients, we've got some Fuggle Hops, which we'll be dividing and getting into later. Our packet of dry yeast, which when this arrives, you're going to want to put it in the fridge. It likes to stay nice and cold until we're ready to use it. And our bag of grains. This is our beer. This is going to give us all our wonderful flavors. It's going to be great. The first thing we need to do, and the name of the game, is have our sanitizer. What we have is a no ring san sanitizer. Little crystals here. You put a tablespoon of the crystals into a gallon of warm water. The only reason for it to be warm is to help it all dissolve. And then you are set. The reason why we have the sanitizer here is we don't want the yeast fighting for dominance in the beer. We want them to be the only bacteria in there. And so the sanitizer will take care of everything else. This has no flavor. It is food safe and it's no rinse, which means whenever we use something and sanitize like we're going to sanitize our funnel, we just let it sit and dry. We don't rinse it off because the moment you rinse it off, you lose your sanitizer. All right, so let's get to brewing. So the next step is to bring a half gallon of water up to 160 degrees. This is the water that we're going to be adding our grain to and have it mashing, which is doing the conversion of starch to sugars. We're wanting 160 degrees because when we add the grain, it'll drop down to between 152 and 155 degrees. The temperature that the grain sits in the water is very important as it affects how sweet or dry your beer will be at the final stages. All right, so our strike water has hit 160 degrees. And so this is when we are mashing in. We are going to be adding our grain into the water and you want to be stirring regularly and pour slowly. We're trying to avoid any clumps of grain any dry areas. Uh, if you end up with dry areas, that'll be grain that isn't getting converted, which means it's less beery goodness, which means less alcohol, means less flavor. So you want to just take it nice and slow. If you get a large dump like that, just take a pause and then just keep going until it's all in. It'll start thickening up. It'll start getting into more of an oatmeal consistency. See right there, I've got some dry patches. I just stir them in. Oh, and at this point, I have turned off the heat. I will be checking my temperature once all the grain is added. A couple dry areas, so I slow it down once again. See, it's getting nice and thick. Get the last goodness. Give it a few really good stirs. So our grain and our water are mixed together now. So what we're doing right now is what's called mashing. We're converting the starch of the grain into sugar, which the yeast is going to consume and turn into alcohol. We are needing to maintain that 152 to 154 degree temperature for an entire hour. So during that hour, you'll want to check every 10 to 15 minutes, take the lid off, give it a stir and check the temperature. If it is low, uh, you just give it a little bit of the heat, keep it stirring, check in several different spots because the temperature can vary, get in that range, cover it up, and leave it alone for a while. If you somehow end up a bit high, you always can throw a little cold water in there. It's not that much of a stress. And if you want to go the really easy way and potentially have it drop a little bit low on the uh, temperature range, not that big of a deal, wrap it up in a bunch of towels, some beach towels, whatnot, to really insulate it, and just let it sit. So we have about 15 minutes left on the mash, which means it's time to heat up our sparge water, which is what we're going to be using to rinse sugars off of the grain. We need this water, so one gallon volume. I don't have a large pot, so I split it amongst a couple small pots. Do the same, doesn't really matter one way or the other for you. I am getting up to 170 degrees. That's the ideal temperature to strip sugar off without getting tannins. So hopefully by the time this gets up to the temperature, this mash will be complete and it's ready to go on to our next stage. So our hour mash is over. So what I'm doing now 
is bringing up the temperature of the mash to 170 degrees so the sugar can melt away from the grain as much as possible. Being that they're at 170 now actually, I'm going to be separating the liquid from the grain. I've taken a colander, which you want to do, and put the muslin bag over it. My colander is a bit large so I put clips on it to keep it from going anywhere. We're going to be draining the liquid into a vessel. If I had another large pot, I'd just put this on the pot. Being that I don't, I have a large mixing bowl, just going to put it in there, it'll work just fine. So, take your mash and gently pour it into the bag. If the bag happens to pull from a side, don't stress, you can fix it a little bit later. So we're going to let that sit there. And being that this is rather thick, there's not going to be much liquid coming out on its own. We're going to let that drip for a little bit. And in the meantime, make sure that our gallon of sparge water is at 170 degrees. So we've let this sit for a while. It has drained a good amount of liquid. And by a while, I mean two, three minutes. You don't need to have to wait that long. So I've got my gallon of 170 degree sparge water. I'm just going to be pouring this over onto the grain. So just pouring it nice and gentle across here, making sure I'm not going to overflow my vessel. So you fill it in there. You give it a couple little spins. You can give it a gentle, gentle stir. Not a hard stir because we're not wanting to force the grain actually through the mesh. And then we just let it drain again. And we're going to repeat this with the remaining liquid that we have left over to fulfill that entire one gallon. All right, so the last of the water is in here and I apparently grabbed a bowl that was just the right size. So we're gonna take our colander with our grains, put it over our pot, which we were using before. You wanna make sure that there isn't any grain left inside the pot, so give it a quick rinse. And then we are going to start washing this through again. So we just want to take our liquid and do exactly what we did before and just rinse it across it. And we're actually going to repeat this step a few times. This is to make sure we get off as much of that sugary, grainy goodness as possible. So we have as flavorful of a beer as we can make. So I've done my three rinses back and forth and I now have my pot full of a little over a gallon of what is now called wort. I'm going to take my grain and let it sit out in that bowl there. If any more liquid comes out and we collect it, we can always add it back to the pot. This now is going to go back on the stove. We're going to crank this thing up high and get it up to a boil. Once it's boiling, that's when we're going to be doing all of our hops additions. Very important note, wort loves to boil over. So when you're doing this step, don't wander away or else you'll end up with sugar stuff all over your stove and terrible smells and a big mess to clean up. So pay hard attention while you're getting a boil established. So a note on disposing of your spent grains. If you're gonna hold on to them and use them for cooking, great. Bag them up, put them in the fridge, do what you want to do with them. There's a bunch of great recipes out there for dog biscuits, cookies, and so on and so forth. If you're just going to throw it in the trash, throw it in a bag. Being that the grains have been converted, they are going to start to rot real fast. They are going to stink to high heaven. And unless you want to wash out your trash can after a couple days of them sitting in there, bag it up so it's nice and sealed so you don't have to worry about any terrible smells. So we are nearing a boil or just about there now. As you see, there's a lot of foam on top. To keep yourself from having a boil over, you're gonna to wanna to be stirring this so you maintain at least one section where you can actually see the liquid. The moment the foam covers the whole surface, that's when you have the issue of having a boil over. You will get to the point where this foam will recede and you won't have to keep stirring it over and over again to pull the section off. Don't do large stirrings because that can pull bubbles in the bottom, blurp up, and you're splattering sugar everywhere. 
So as you can see right now, I've got this section right here where there isn't any foam showing up. The foam is over here. It's not increasing in the amount of foam. So I'm going to bring the boil down. We want to have a gentle boil, not a hard boil. We don't want to bring it down too low, but not so much as a simmer. Once we have that boil established, once we feel good about it, which that looks pretty good right there. We also want to keep an eye on this. We're going to be adding a quarter ounce of our hops. This is an ounce packet. If you don't happen to have a high precision scale, one tablespoon of hops, not crushed, just gently laid in there, is about a quarter of an ounce. We're going to add that in here, give it a stir. It might turn a little green, but that's okay. Those hops are what are adding the bitterness to the beer. And uh, so this will be bouncing out as a nice American brown ale with that quarter ounce. Now we're going to boil for one hour, but we're going to be adding our last addition of hops when there's only five minutes left in the boil. So you're going to want to make sure you have a timer, keep an eye on when that uh, five minutes remaining is showing up, and keep an eye on this until you really have a good established boil and you're not concerned about it boiling over on you because you do not want to mess with that mess. So we have five minutes left in our hour long boil. So we're gonna add our last addition of hops. So this is 0.1 ounces. It's not much, but it's enough to make a difference. This is what's gonna be adding aroma. The hops, when they're added later on in the boil, add aroma. The ones that are at the very beginning only add bitterness. So this will give it a nice earthy hop aroma on top of that wonderful brown malt. So we're going to let this boil for another five minutes. You can see, you can see I've got a significant reduction in the uh, fluid that I have here. Uh, when the five minutes is completed, we'll be sticking this in an ice bath and getting it nice and cold. And that is when we really have to worry about sanitation. So our hour has passed on the boil, turn off the heat, and now we're going to be throwing this into the ice bath. So I've thrown some ice and some water in a sink, and we are trying to cool down the wort down to 65 to 70 degrees. At this point, sanitation is on. Anything that is going to touch that wort, you need to have it go into your sanitizer first. Make sure it's clean and then put in the sanitizer before you do anything like stirring the wart or checking the temperature of the wart as you go along. So you're wanting to get this down to 65 to 70 degrees. That's where the yeast will be the happiest. So keep an eye on that. If you're concerned about things falling in, you can put the lid on at an angle. I have the lid off because I'm not concerned about anything here falling into there and that way I can get the wart to cool down a lot faster. So now that the wart is chilling in the ice bath, it's time to start doing some sanitation of our equipment. I lay down a piece of aluminum foil. This is gonna be my surface where I put everything that gets sanitized. Usually you wanna give just a quick brushing down the sanitizer. I found it easy if you haven't had one laying around, get a spray bottle and that makes life a lot easier for everything. So we're going to be wanting to sanitize everything that's gonna to be touching our wart. So we want to be sanitizing our spigot, we're going to be wanting to sanitize our airlock, all components in there, drown it out, blub it, whatever. There you go. And we're also going to want to be sanitizing inside the jug. Whoop. So just throwing some solution in there. And this is a contact no rinse again, so all we have to do is make sure that it touches all surfaces of the fermentation vessel. So that's nice and sanitized. Got that there, that's looking good. And at this point, go like that to make sure nothing drops into it. And we're ready for when the wart is chilled. So our wart is chilled down, everything's sanitized. We're just ready to throw the wart into the fermenter. So as we go along, we have to make sure again, everything is clean. Now I don't trust myself to be able to pour this in there through this whole thing using the bucket. So I'm just going to go ahead and sanitize, slosh everything around there on a little cup pour. That's what I do. It's easy if you think you can pour that in there without making a mess, by all means. And if you have anyone who's helping you, 
make sure they stick their hands in the sanitizer as well if they're going to come in and do any sort of assistance. Like my lovely assistant who's holding the funnel. So you just make sure that you get as much in there as possible. Pour it all in there. There will be some sludge at the bottom of the boil kettle. Don't worry about that. You can throw it in the fermenter. You can leave it behind. That's up to you. It'll all fall out at the end anyway. So just keep doing this until your uh, boil kettle is empty. So I seem to have boiled a bit aggressively, being that I am below one gallon, which is right where the writing is on here. But no problem, you can add cold filtered water, but what I prefer to do is use bottled water. The whole point of that is, again, sanitation. Bottled water has to be food grade, which means it doesn't have anything there, so we're not gonna introduce anything to this. So if you need to top it off, dip your bottle in some sanitizer, and then just go ahead and fill it up to that one gallon mark. So we have the final two steps now, which is to add our yeast and then install our airlock. We have this giant packet of yeast. We're not gonna be using all this. We're going to be using about a third of it. So dip it in the sanitizer. Your scissors you're gonna be using, dip them in the sanitizer. It might seem overkill, but trust me, this is where it's really important. Cut open your yeast packet and just very gently sprinkle in about a third of the yeast, enough that'll spread out and make a nice thin film across the top. You don't have to stir it, you don't have to shake it. If there's clumps, don't worry about that. That's just what happened. So that looks good. Yeah, it looks just fine. Then we put our airlock in. We wanna make sure it's entirely sanitized as from before. There's three pieces here, and if you take a look on your airlock, it'll be a little bit hard to tell on video, but there's a very thin line about an inch of the way up. You want to fill that with sanitizer. So you install that right on top of the fermenter, put the little bell on there, and put the cap. This will allow CO2 to escape from the fermenter, out from the yeast, without letting air back in. So in about two days, you should be seeing little bubbles coming up through here. If you don't see bubbles, don't stress. It might be that you have a bad seal. This is sliding a bit, but you'll see some foam on top. So leave it in a cool space. If you can get something around 70 degrees, that's great. Don't let it be exposed to the sun because you don't want it to go skunky before you can drink it. So just let it sit for a while. It'll take about a week to fully ferment out. So this is after a couple days of fermentation. There's been some scuzz on the top. There's some scuzz on the bottom. This is normal. That's just how it works. It means it's doing its job correctly. So this is just going to sit for a few more days to let the fermentation finish out. And then we'll be getting to bottling. This is Michael Lipton, and this is Rogue's Brew.